The Matrix is a wonderful trans hero's journey film that might just be the greatest film ever made. It's one of those brilliant cinema cocktails where they discuss a lot about philosophy and the nature of reality and self-knowledge, and then it goes and you're like, hell yeah, bro. But The Matrix also has a surprisingly brilliant villain, and not the kind of villain that you'd expect in a film where the bad guys are monotone artificial intelligence. This is my favorite scene in the film. In this scene, everything changes, and we realize what our heroes are really up against. Smith almost goes through a character arc in a film that isn't about him. Out of all the crazy reveals in this masterpiece, this is one of my favorites. Why would that be? The Matrix is a computer world where a faction of hackers plug in to try and free the minds of those trapped inside. The evil force in this movie are the machines, the ones who created the Matrix to enslave human beings and sap their body heat in order to survive. But the actual antagonist of the film is Agent Smith, the apparent leader of the programs who are trying to hunt down the resistance, specifically Morpheus. We first meet Smith in the opening scene. He exits a car and looks like a government agent. The police lieutenant certainly treats him like one, but he doesn't say FBI or CIA. He just says, hey, you had specific orders for your protection. Lieutenant goes, I think we're gonna handle one little girl. And then Smith gives a look, a cold stare of fear? No, recognition. He's dealing with a powerful person. Despite being one of the overlords of this world, he knows that Trinity is a powerful force and will completely destroy these cops. Trinity gets away after Smith tries to smash her with a really menacing garbage truck. Like, it looks evil. They find out they're looking for a guy called Neo, so they arrest him. Right from the beginning, these guys look like robots, completely emotionless, cold, efficient movers. You can tell just by looking at them that they're not human. It's great stuff from everyone, not just Hugo Weaving. But they do have their quirks. Smith interrogates Neo and speaks in an odd cadence one of these lives has a future. He speaks extremely slowly, but emphasizes his words distinctly. Kind of like he's speaking to a child. This was originally based on the speaking pattern of the Wachowskis, the directors. But it's a good choice that reflects the domineering personality of machines at war with humanity, but with a personal curiosity that comes up in lines like, Help your landlady carry out her garbage. Despite being a machine, he's clearly an individual, which fleshes this world out in a cool way. The Matrix isn't just the same artificial intelligence, it's actually an entire race of machines and programs, all working together but not the same. Naturally, they have some differences. His disdain for Neo is shown in this line read, which I really like. Whatever you think you know about this man is irrelevant. He pronounces the T in irrelevant, making it just slightly more biting. There's a really cool line here where he says Morpheus is considered to be the most dangerous man alive. And he's not talking about the authorities, he's talking about the machines. Morpheus is trying to free people enslaved by the Matrix, and there's no greater threat to the machines than losing their power source. It's a cool little double entendre. And then comes... My colleagues believe that I'm wasting my time with you. Shortly after removing his glasses, something that none of the other agents ever do. Even early on in this film, Smith is set apart as a unique agent that they're dealing with. We find out why later. The next time we see Smith is 40 minutes later. He's barely in this movie. It's mostly about the main characters, which makes sense. He shows up in a training program to emphasize that anyone in the Matrix could be an agent. Smith, specifically. They scare both Neo and the audience with the agent who has been terrorizing us. Morpheus calls him a sentient program, further emphasizing that he's not just programmed to do what he does. He can think freely for himself. I've always loved this shot of Smith holding a gun to Neo in the reflection of Morpheus' glasses. It's basically screaming at us that Smith is the biggest threat to Neo, and he's always in danger of being caught by him. I guess you could also say it's foreshadowing for the ending. Y you could. It's almost, it's almost like that. Smith's next scene is with Cypher, negotiating a deal so the machines can get access to Zion, which is the last last human city and my dream home. The thing about this performance is that it's very calculated. It subtly shows emotions that may pass you by if you're not focusing on it. When Smith says Morpheus, he almost looks excited. There's so much intensity in it that Cypher reacts to it, ashamed of what he's about to do, but also a little unsettled by Smith. Smith then uses this information to catch up on the group and Morpheus dives onto him to save the others. Smith introduces himself to Morpheus with a kind of satisfaction. We meet at last. He brutally kicks the shit out of Morpheus and performs it really well. He's ferocious. And after beating him, he looks back at him with disgust. Then we are, depending on your personality, subjugated or treated to three monologues from this character. Three layers of how Smith feels and thinks. It's good for the screenplay because in this film, he is the face of the machines. So we're learning more about the opposing force in this war. Morpheus is now in a military building for interrogation. Smith talks about the Matrix. He calls it beautiful and genius. Importantly though, he says, have you ever stood and stared at it? 
Marvel did it. Which implies that he does this sometimes. Maybe in his downtime, he sips a coffee and puts on reruns of The Daily Show while staring at a building. But, <laughs> but he can't. Clearly, he's a program. So when does he do this? Does he have downtime? It brings so many thoughts to my head of what kind of person he is to have had this experience and thought in his mind. He's not just doing what he's told. He's thinking about it. Thinking for himself. He then gives the first monologue about the history of the Matrix. How it used to be a perfect paradise with unicorns and rainbows and sunshine and cotton candy orgasms, but no one would accept it as reality. They kept waking up. Apparently there was some debate as to why this was the case, but Smith has his own personal view on why that project failed. I believe that as a species, human beings define their reality through misery and suffering. We then get more of this bitter bullying of humanity. Evolution, like the dinosaur. You had your time. We are more evolved than you. The second monologue delves even further into Smith's being, as he tells the story of when he once tried to classify the human species. Which again, hang on. At what point was Smith trying to classify them? Was he explaining something to another AI and realized he didn't have a label for humans that sufficiently fit, and then spent the next 10 minutes trying to figure it out? Why would he do that? The implications of these lines are so interesting. It's what makes it deep and what makes him a good character. We don't need to see all this, we infer it. And then, uh, then we get to the real good shit. Describe humanity as a virus. He speaks to Morpheus, this leader of humanity, this pain in his ass, and just condescends the shit out of him. Human beings are a disease, and we are the cure. This is probably the most iconic part of these monologues, but right after this, we finally get back to the reason why we're here. The final monologue. Oh my god, I love it so much. Oh, it's so good. The interrogations are not working. One of the agents pipes up and speaks in a typical robot-style tone. Perhaps we're asking the wrong questions. Which sets us up for the heavily contrasting tone in which Smith says, Leave me with him. Oh shit. No. The other agents are shocked, but they walk out. Smith looks genuinely pissed off, and we're thinking, w w why is he angry now? W what's changed? What is he gonna do? And this is my favorite scene in The Matrix. Smith sits down and takes off his glasses, saying, I'm going to be honest with you and also takes out his earpiece, the thing he's been using all along to communicate with his team. And it's kind of implied that they use it to locate people in the Matrix. We've never seen this before. What is happening? I hate this place. Holy shit. Okay, okay, hold up. So not only does Smith feel anger, he has an active specific rage. Rage for his job, having to do all this, having to be in charge. That's really cool. It's the smell. Wait, what? I can... Taste your stink. It's repulsive. <laughs> Isn't it? Oh my god, this guy doesn't just think he's better than humans, he hates them. G O O. I must get out of here. Jesus Christ! I must get free. Everybody stay calm! Oh, and in this mind is the key. What? My key. What the fuck? Once Zion is destroyed, there is no need for me to be here. Do you understand? <laughs> I need the codes. I have to get inside Zion. And you have to tell me how. Smith isn't just a robot, he is an angry, vindictive spirit with a deep hatred of humans. He fucking hates his job. This is personal. This informs his entire character from everything that's happened to everything that's going to happen. Every single action that he's made so far hasn't just been about winning this stupid war. He personally wants to be free of his duties, finish his job, get this shit over with, and get out of the Matrix. Morpheus has always been the key to victory, but he doesn't call it our key, he says it's my key. So. Who is Smith? Smith is a conscious, thinking, living being. He's as much a human as anyone who's also stuck in their job, stuck in their body, and stuck in the matrix. The terminology he's using here is the same that the runners use. He wants to be free from the matrix. The first time I watched this at an age I could understand it, it blew my fucking mind. The machines and humans are one and the same, capable of destruction, anger, spite, and he has superpowers, fuck. And not only that, he's been holding this in from everyone around him. He doesn't want his colleagues to know that he feels this way. They come back in and they go, what the fuck are you doing? Which leads us to my favorite character trait about him. He's lonely. <laughs> Smith is a lonely, vicious, vindictive incel. <laughs> and he won't give up trying to hunt everyone down because it's not for the greater good. It's something that he desperately wants. In this scene, all of our perceptions of Smith fall away to reveal a
a person. He's a person. The machines having emotions and being a lot like humans is something extremely important in the sequels. But in this movie, it's just a small taste of world building, specifically to make this character as evil and as scary as possible so Neo can rise up and take him down. From this point on, when he's fighting Neo, he's not just trying to keep him from escaping. This is revenge. You stole my key away from me and I'm gonna kill you to death. Dead naming him the whole time. I'm gonna enjoy watching you die. I don't know if this is intentional, but throughout this fight, he could probably kill him at any point, right? Break his neck, punch through his heart, but he doesn't. He beats the crap out of him and then decides to let him get run over by a train. That's odd. That doesn't sound very efficient or machine-like. He's struck with an inspiration on how to kill him. Trying to make him absolutely suffer before the end. Goodbye. Mr. Anderson. But Neo says trans rights and gets away. But Smith finally gets to kill him and he shoots his entire clip into the guy. Look at his face. This isn't mission accomplished. This is fuck you right to hell you piece of shit. And finally, when Neo as the one defeats him, we see the most human emotion he's expressed so far. He's afraid truly terrified. He doesn't want to die. And then he explodes in a fiery, bigoted rage. <laughs> Going back to the Matrix now, we forget that this is a reveal. It's a surprise, almost a twist. Turns out the guy that's been hunting you all along isn't this cold, artificial intelligence. He actually fucking hates you and yearns for your destruction. Every second that you're alive is painful for him. This makes him more scary to the characters and to us. And we feel so much more satisfied when Neo is fighting him because of that. This scene makes the ending work. It's the unexpected nature of him that makes him one of the greatest villains villains I've ever seen on screen. This monologue fleshes out the world, deepens our understanding of the entire machine army, and perfectly sets Smith on a path to completely taking over the Matrix in the underrated sequels. Also notice the placement of the scene. What happens right after this? The big shootout! It's the perfect little twist that leads right into the biggest action scene that will last for the rest of the movie. Even the score leads directly from this scene into the next. <laughs> Pacing is everything, and I think that the reason the third act is so memorable is because we got this right before it. See, within this fantastic trans action philosophical spectacle with a hero's journey executed perfectly, there's also a brilliant villain, one that surprises you, reflects the darkest parts of humanity despite being a machine, and has so much hatred you can't wait to see Neo triumphantly annihilate. It's a very key piece of why the ending is so endlessly watchable, and it tees it up to ace the basket and score the run into infinity. Masterpiece. Hi, I'm Ben from Canada, and today a playlist has just come out called One Villain in a scene where this video is now located. You can add videos to it. It'll be like a whole cool little cool thing. Subscribe, hit the bell, give me money on Patreon, and love you.